In the previous video, we looked at why businesses are excited about process mining. So today, uh, we try and look at what is the actual logic behind this particular technology called process mining. To understand this, let us recap what is business process management and also try and um, define process mining from a business process management angle. Business process management, as you all know, is basically business process has been created by a team of experts in an organization. So those experts will then implement these process in the IT system and that process that has been implemented in the IT system has been followed okay, by the end users or the staff or the human resource on the ground uh, when they actually use those IT systems. Basically, they follow the process created by the experts uh, with the help of IT systems and that's how a business process management works. Just to show this in steps, uh, the step one would be experts design the business processes. Step two would be they implement the business process across the IT system and the final step is the IT system coordinates employees to follow the process in the enterprise. So now coming back to process mining, once we understand this business process management, it is very easy to understand process mining because what process mining does is all the digital footprints or the log and the people who actually perform the activity leaves in the IT system has been gathered by this process mining tool. It has been cleansed and transformed and a dynamic visualization has been uh, generated by the tool. That is how a process mining tool works. In few steps, how it does is, uh, like you know, step one, as you all know, employees generate digital footprints while performing their activities. So what do I mean by digital footprints is any activity they perform, a log has been created okay, in the IT system. So that is what time an activity has been performed and what is the activity. That log is there in a IT system log table. Then that digital footprints are recorded in the IT system. That is a step two. In step three, uh, what happens is process mining tool reads these uh, digital footprints, cleanses it and transforms the digital footprints into a data model. And that data model has been loaded into a process mining tool and the end-to-end -end, uh, process visualization is automatically created. And this is how the actual process mining tool performs the task of building the uh, visualization. Today's topic, okay, we said that we will go deep into understanding okay, how this logic works within the process mining tool. So to understand the actual logic, so let us try and manually create a process visualization from the digital footprints because that is the same method or logic tool does it programmatically to build that uh, visualization but to do that manually let us take a sample process so for simplicity let us consider a purchase to pay process for a company so a purchase to pay process is as simple as organization who wants to buy something sends a purchase order to a vendor and the vendor sends the goods sends the invoice and receive a payment from the organization who wants to buy it if you put it in order the organization who wants to buy the goods first would send the purchase order then they would idly receive the goods from the vendor and they would receive an invoice from the vendor so some checks happen called as approvals whether the quantity and the price for the purchase order sent is matching the goods that has been received and also the invoice that has been created from the vendor if the price and quantity matches in all the three different documents a payment can be processed and the final step is the process payment if approved payment would be processed let us now see uh, how this particular process has multiple different variations within the same company probably to the same vendor across different purchase orders so let's say okay the purchase order number one has been sent to buy a small headphones uh, for the employees. So in purchase order one, the buyer would uh, send a purchase order to the headphone vendor and the vendor would send the goods, that is the headphones to the buyer. They would receive the goods and the vendor would send the invoice back. Okay, so and they would receive the invoice and when the invoice is matched with the goods that has been received and the purchase order, an approval is done from the buying organization. And finally, payment has been processed to the vendor. These are all different activities within this process the send purchase order receive goods receive invoice between activities there is some duration it won't happen immediately sometimes it might happen immediately sometimes it might take a long time so ideally from sending purchase order to receive the goods it takes a bit longer so let's say hypothetically it takes 10 days likewise between other activity we have random duration considering or adding up all this duration together we can get the total cycle time 
for this process to finish for this particular purchase order that's the order number one in this case it takes 13 days now we'll see another variation of the same process with the order number two let's say in this case order number two is something so they want to buy uh, stationaries for the employees and they send the purchase orders to a stationary vendor now what happens is uh, in this case the stationary vendor delays to send the goods by um, two days but they send the invoice on time the buying organization get the invoice in 11 days but they get the goods after 12 days we can clearly see in this particular order the receive invoice has become before the receive goods we can clearly say this is not following the standard process we can see the total cycle time in this case has incremented to 15 days let us consider another variation now the order number three let's say in order number three they are ordering a uh, fry sale gifts for the employees buying organization send a pay purchase order to the gifting vendor or the gift supply vendor and they receive the goods on time that is in 10 days and they get uh, the invoice after they receive the goods after one day but what happens this time the invoice received from the gift supplier the value or the price that has been mentioned in invoice is not in a line or with the purchase order it is not matching so they have to reject the payment process for now because they have to correct this so now what happens happens the purchase order department guy gets in touch with the vendor side the sales guy to understand why the invoice pricing is wrong and probably they have to correct it and get the right invoice with the right price once that is got an approval happens again so that is approval number 2 so once that is matched payment has been processed so in this case like you know since the price has was wrong from the vendor invoice side so it has to be sent back so there are some uh, delays in payment because of the wrong price so that has been captured as part of the lead time so we can see the total cycle time has been again incremented to 15 days so now we just saw three cases so that is order number 1 order number 2 and order number 3 so imagine in a real organization the number number of orders they process across the different type of materials uh, in an organization so it will be massive there will be lots and lots of transaction so to analyze every order it is going to be extremely difficult for the organization that's where process mining actually helps so what process mining does is by getting the digital footprints as so the process mining Uh, would give a visualization which would be more like a consolidated process across all the cases or the cases within the time period okay I have taken into account and builds a dynamic process like this as an example okay I have built it based on these three cases where you can see all the red is case number 1 which is the purchase order number 1 the black is purchase order number 2 and the green is purchase order number 3 so this gives a business a very good insight about how the process is performing you know, how many different type of variations are there in the process so where there are reworks where there are bottlenecks where there are deviations also gives us what are the overall cycle time and which particular or like which group of cases is incrementing the cycle time so all those information can be gathered okay from one single visualization that's where okay process mining is adding a lot of value to business so in this case we can clearly see the curly arrows clearly says the rework because approvals was done twice and it has incremented the overall lead time by 2 days so which is more like a non value added activity ideally if the vendor would have sent the price in the invoice rightly they should have not rejected it in a good process they want to try and reduce the number of exceptions or like you know non value added activities to reduce that exception and non value added activities one should understand what are those in the as is process and that's where process mining is useful more like a diagnostic tool to understand the current process how well it is performed where all improvement measures can be applied those in insights and intelligence can be get from the process mining visualization so and also you can see the average cycle time uh, ideally here it is 14.3 days which is a uh, average of all the three case cycle time this has given us a lot of insight okay i hope this would have uh, kind of got you some kind of idea about like you know what process mining like is like and also what value it can add to the business going forward uh, like you know we can try and explore more about this uh, particular technology so for today i would say as a conclusion process mining is a tool that actually produces one consolidated process visual from pretty much every uh, digital footprints you select for the actual analysis it consolidated all those footprints across all the activities within the process and gives you one visualization where you can analyze to understand how
how the process is performing. In future videos, we will look at uh, uh, how actually these data models or digital footprints actually are in an IT system, how it can be cleansed, transformed and modeled and how it can be loaded into a process mining tool and how can we gather intelligence from that uh, particular process visualization. So we will look into all of that. I'm quite excited about this particular technology because this can be applied to any business processes irrespective of any functions. It can be applied to a HR recruiting process, can be applied to a purchasing process or an order management process or an order delivery process. So pretty much it can be applied to any process that would actually give you real good intelligence about the process, which can be used to re-engineer the process, improve it and run your business in a better way. So that's it from my side for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave that okay in the comments section below. Uh, and also if you have any questions, feel free to put it there so that I can take a look. And if I know the answer for it, I can reply to you. Finally, if you can uh, do a favor by uh, subscribing to this channel and also like this video and ring the bell button, uh, it would motivate me to do more videos like this so that's it for me i will uh, see you with another video until then you guys have a good good week take care i'll see you soon